Hello and welcome to the Rugby Slate Animator tutorial. This is just going to be a brief overview of how to use the tool. There is a second video that will give you a few more tricks and tips about how to get the most out of it. But with this video, we just want to get you up and ready to use the tool. So first thing is that there is a tutorial built right into the tool itself, which will just take you through how each of the options work and what they do. This can always be accessed again by going up into the menu button and clicking on tutorial. So jumping right into the tool itself, if we click on start animating, you'll now be able to click and drag on players to move them around. If you double click, you'll be able to edit that player so you can change its color as well as the number on its back. And this final option show lines, which will make more sense when we go into the animation part of the tool. If you hit apply changes, you'll see that player has now changed. If we go back into edit it by double clicking, we can then delete that player and now that player is gone. If you ever wanna start afresh and go back to those four players with the ball, just hit menu and new, and those players will reload. If you look at the bottom of the animator, you'll see the timeline, which is probably the most important tool of the whole animator. It effectively allows you to control exactly where players are at each time point. So at the moment, we've got five frames or keyframes, as they're called, which is shown by these vertical lines. If you consider these as points in time, you'll see if we move to the second point in time and we move some of the players forward, that once we move from the first to second keyframe, those players will then be able to move. You can do this onwards, making more and more complicated animations, and then simply play the animation and allow it to loop through. I'm gonna create a new animation, and the first thing I'm gonna do is edit number 12 and click that show lines option I talked about before. If you hit apply changes and then start animating that player, you'll see the number 12 now traces its movements. This is really handy if you wanna do very complicated backs moves. So then that player then runs along that path. Let's say instead of wanting the 12 to run up and across, you want it to run more towards the posts. What we need to do is add a frame between two and three. So if we go on edit frames, and then using these arrows, we can navigate across to where we wanna go. You have to see a little orange cross down here as well, showing you where that frame will be added. So we want between two and three. Let's hit add frame. We now have this extra frame in here. So if we move number 12 towards the post with the show lines option on, you can then see we're now in this different shape movement. We now have six total keyframes rather than before we only had five. If we wanna go back and delete that keyframe, if we just do edit frame, go across to delete frame. And then again, you can see a little cross on the timeline appears to show what you're going to be doing. And I'm gonna go on frame number three and hit delete frame. Now you can see we're back at that original box shape. The next thing to look at is the speed option. So if I play the animation and then change the speed, I'm able to speed the player right up and select right down. You can see from this option here, that we're in global mode, which means we're affecting globally the speed. However, if we go to frame one, you see that orange line now only indicates the frame one we're looking at. And I can change that right down. So when it gets around to frame one, that animation occurs really slowly and then it will go back to its normal speed. The next thing to look at is the draw option. So this is very self-explanatory. I'm able to draw a line of any of these colors using either the sketch mode, so that's sort of free drawing, lines, which are great for indicating a back line or maybe even a defensive line, arrows, which work really well at indicating where you want attacks to go, and then boxes. For example, if you want to try and highlight some space you want to attack. These can all be removed just by going through the undo button. So going across to the menu button, we obviously have that new button. Below that, there is pitch. So we're able to zoom in and out of the pitch. And by clicking and dragging on the screen, we can actually move around the pitch. We can rotate it if you want to get a bit more of a landscape view on it. And then if you ever end up far away from the pitch and can't find it again, just hit recenter and they'll take you back to the middle of the pitch. Further down, we have the save button, which just downloads all the data needed uh, into a file, which you then can then upload back into the animator and continue editing whatever animation you've been creating. Export captures the animation you've created and exports it as an MP4 file, so a video file. The final option in the menu is this auto save keyframes button. This will be explained in the other video I talked about where we go more in depth about how to use the tool to get the most out of it. 
Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully now you'll be able to use the animator to start creating your own animations. If you want to learn more about the animator, please check out the other videos on my channel. And if you want more rugby content, please follow me on Instagram, which is where I'm posting most of my content.